And now it's time for our message this morning, which will be delivered by practitioner Sandra Cooper, an excellent life coach and facilitator, and now budding songwriter. You will note that the third verse of that hymn we just sung was written by Sandra. Please help me welcome Sandra Cooper. Thank you, Carol. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I welcome you to my heart, and I welcome you to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And I say a special welcome to those of you who are joining us online. I'm so delighted to have each and every one of you here this morning. Now, as Carol said, next Sunday we celebrate our 40th anniversary, July 4. That's 40 years of science of mind, teaching and healing. I thought that now would be a good time for us to reflect on how the experience has served you and how it can continue to serve you in the years to come. I'm going to start with a few questions, and I really would like to ask that you think about these questions. On a scale of one to five, with one being the lowest and five being the highest, how well do you know and understand the principles of the science of mind? Just make a, a jotting or, or, or a mental note. Are you at a one? Are you at a three or a five? Where are you? Think about that. What is it about this teaching that attracts you and keeps you coming back repeatedly every Sunday? Some of you come a few, you know, every now and again, but some of you are here religiously every Sunday. I'm just looking around the room, room, room and I can see that person has here, here for decades. For decades. What keeps, what you, keeps coming you coming back? back? How, how, how have, have you been using, using the science of mind to address day-to-day -to -day challenges? Because it's, because it's not a Sunday morning feel good. It's a practical tool that we can use in our day-to-day -day experience. And how has it made a difference to the quality of your life and affairs? So some questions that should give you some food for thought. Consider these questions very carefully. And I trust that my message this morning, which I have entitled New Thought Wisdom for Personal Transformation, I hope that it will be helpful to you. So in this month's Science of Mind magazine, Reverend Dr. David Alexander describes founder Ernest Holmes' writings, and I quote, as having captured new thought wisdom in a 20th century bottle. Lightning in a bottle, he called it. I concur. This teaching is powerful and it is transformational. And we have access to it. Isn't that something? Let's do a quick recap of Holmes' new thought principles. One, God is principle, indestructible, absolute, self-existent. God is all power, all good, present in all places at all times, and is all wisdom and intelligence. They call that omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. Two, all human beings are divine beings. I am divine, and you are divine. We are not hopeless sinners, as I was told as a child. We are individualized expressions of God, regardless of age, race, gender, education, economic status, sexual orientation, religion, or beliefs. Three, we are all spiritual beings, living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law. We focus on the spiritual nature within not on the ego's need for outer validation. Our thinking creates our experiences, 
individually and collectively. We are on number four. Our focus is on consciousness development and how we can thrive in a world governed by cause and effect. When we are in control of our thinking, we stand in our power. As we change our thinking, we change our lives. Five, through affirmative prayer and spiritual mind, or what we call spiritual mind healing treatment, we learn how to align our thinking with the highest good that we can imagine. We do not need to beg and beseech or convince God to give us anything. Prayer provides a direct connection to God and helps us consciously connect with deeper aspects of our being. Prayer enables us to address any situation of lack at any time and expand our consciousness so that the immutable action and creativity of law may flow through us. Six, new thought teaches that the universe is orderly and governed by universal law. The sun, as I know it, will set in the west. It will rise in the east. Mango seeds must produce mango trees. Relevant right now, eh? Mm. Anybody has Bombay mango trees, see me after the service. Fretting and worrying about money cannot generate prosperity, while a consciousness of abundance attracts the good we desire. Seven, it follows that we teach prosperity, which is the consciousness of God as the abundant, everywhere present source, unfailing, ready for all who open themselves to it through faith. Prosperity is total well-being, not just money. And a consciousness of abundance must show up as abundant experience because the universe is governed by law. Eight, we bring a metaphysical interpretation to the Bible. We take this wonderful book seriously and teach it powerfully without taking it literally. And the last one for now. We teach spiritual healing, the expression of our inner spiritual wholeness in and through our minds, bodies, and affairs. We can transform and heal the body through affirmative prayer, meditation, and a shift in beliefs. Now, there is a lot more, more to, to this teaching, to new, to new thought wisdom, but I'll stop here for now. Now, applying these tools and principles in our day-to-day -day living can make an enormous difference to the quality and condition of our lives. We want to be successful, don't we? We want more fulfilling relationships, more joy, greater access to life's finest things, bountiful opportunities for creative self-expression, Everything good that we are doing today, we want to see multiplied, don't we? Yeah? Okay. And it can happen. We must use the creative power of mind in the best way possible to influence our behavior and attitude, affect our actions and reactions, shape our reality, and facilitate positive personal transformation. All of this is what Dr. Arthur Chang, spiritual leader of Founders Church in Los Angeles, calls positive spirituality. And that is the title of the course that we are doing on a Thursday morning with Reverend John. Positive spirituality. And he says, and I quote, that this positive spirituality encourages us to thrive and flourish and reject a weak victim, victim acceptance of ourselves, end of quote. He also says that positive spirituality is for bolstering our faith in our power to be fully and rapturously alive. Who in here wants to be rapturously alive? I say one person, two. You don't want to be rapturously alive, not just sort of half dead going on, you know, let me say in Jamaica we say galangso. No man, we want to be rapturously alive. 
So what are we going to do with all this positive spirituality? Holmes says, we are going to we're going to think from the basis that there is a divine energy and power which desires us to have every good thing, not a little, but all the love that there is, all the wealth that there is, all the happiness that there is, all the joy and peace and fullest self-expression that there is, right where we are, right here, right now. We need to unlimit our thinking and use it in a constructive, creative manner. You know, many of us here have been coming for a long, long time. And yet, some of us are still challenged with issues around health, relationships, and the biggie. Money. You know? Money challenge. We are learning and practicing the principles we say, but we're not getting the results that we want, or they are not coming fast enough. One might be inclined to throw in the towel. I certainly hope that nobody in here feels that way. However, before you do, I want you to remember the story about the fern and the bamboo. A farmer planted fern and bamboo seeds, and he took care of both of them, giving them water and light and you know, doing what he needed to do as a farmer. The fern grew very quickly, yet nothing came from the bamboo seed. In the second year, the fern grew more vibrant and plentiful. And again, nothing came from the bamboo seed. He continued to nurture both crops equally. But by year three, there was still nothing from the bamboo seed. In year four, the bamboo had still not sprouted while the fern was growing in abundance. Then in the fifth year, a tiny sprout emerged from the earth where the bamboo seeds were planted. Compared to the fern, it was seemingly small and insignificant. But six months later, the bamboo had risen to over 100 feet. You know how tall bamboo can grow. It had spent its first five years growing roots. These roots made it strong and gave it what it needed to survive. The lesson here, friends, is that sometimes we pray as we are struggling with the challenges of life. While we might not see any visible answers to those prayers, at the level of deeper consciousness, we have actually been growing roots, a guarantee. God does not quit the bamboo and will never quit you. The bamboo has a different purpose from the fern, yet they both make the world beautiful. Your time will come and never, 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 never give up. Keep at it. Keep doing your morning prayers. Keep using those wonderful affirmative statements that are sent out um, by Reverend Michael every morning. And use those affirmations. Do the, the assignments that Reverend John gives when he does his encouragement on a Sunday morning. And come to class. That's how we allow the roots to grow. So, so we need to recognize that, like the bamboo, we too will rise high, as high as our consciousness allows. To take this image a little further, if you plant seeds and water them and give them fertilizer, they will grow into healthy, strong plants at their own pace. Thoughts are like seeds. So we need to choose our thoughts carefully. We've heard that here time and time again. Choose what we think. They have a natural tendency to grow, to get powerful and manifest in our lives. So we really want to make sure that what manifests are the good things, the joy and love and peace and abundance that we desire for ourselves. Okay, so we have to feed them our best attention and they will grow. 
So today we need to wake up and know ourselves as free, healthy, happy, and prosperous. We here are the caretakers of the New Thought message, and we need to actively promote it by living it, spreading it, teaching our youth, mentoring the next generation, and making the message available to all who will learn. In the meantime, while we are waiting for our seeds to grow, our time might be well spent in appreciation of what we do have. There is always so much to be grateful for. And one of the, one of the things I can ask you to do when you leave here this evening, this morning, is to just go and make a list. See if, see if you can come up with 100 things that you are grateful for. Just go through your life and look at 100 things. Take on that challenge and see what happens. Even when our goals might seem unattainable, we must be creative and appreciative. And, you know, because there are so many blessings available to us right here and right now. Here is a Nasruddin story to show how. You know, Nasruddin was somewhat of a holy fool from the Sufi tradition. And those of you who, who, who've been coming here for a while, our, our wonderful friend Susan Goff used to tell a Nasruddin story every single time she spoke here. So Nasruddin was wandering by a lake slowly taking in the beautiful scenery all around him. Looking across the water, he spotted a flock of ducks swimming in the lake. Nasruddin thought to himself, hmm, and he's, you know, stroking his beard. He says, wouldn't it be nice to catch a duck or two for dinner? Hmm. He got up and started wading excitedly into the lake to get closer to the ducks thinking about the duck soup he was going to enjoy. Well, the duck saw the muller approaching and moved away as ducks are wont to do. But Nasruddin was determined to have his duck and eat it too. For several hours, the muller tried and tried, failing every time to catch even one duck. Of course, he was making quite a big splash, so, I mean, the ducks were not stupid, so time he got after them, he, they would swim away. He soon got very tired, so he went up on the bank to dry off himself and to rest and catch his breath. After a while, he stretched, opened his bag, took out a loaf of bread, dipped the bread in the water, and began to eat it. Soon, People from the nearby village walk, walking past the lake saw Nasruddin dipping his bread in the lake and eating it. Mullah, wh what are you doing? asked one of the villagers. Nasruddin replied with great confidence, I am having duck soup. <laughs> duck soup? asked the man looking totally perplexed. The people in the crowd looked at each other. Mullah looked at their confusion and laughed and replied, oh, oh, this is what clever people do. One who accepts what he has is never bothered by what he can't have and is always happy. So I'm having duck soup. Friends, friends. You know, as you know, we as mature, mature in our understanding, understanding of nature, nature and action, and action of, spirit, of spirit, and become, and become more proficient in using the tools available to us, we become, we become more, more able, able to direct our thinking as co-creators of our world of experience. We stop resisting, like Nasruddin, when things don't go according to plan. He couldn't catch a duck, so he made the next best thing, pretend that he was having duck soup. And so we have to turn our creativity into making duck soup without the duck. And let me give you an example. You know, up to last year, March, my work took me into the training rooms and the boardrooms in public and private sectors across the length and breadth of Jamaica. Then COVID happened, and every workshop I had was canceled. 
Did I panic? Of course. You know, I like went into, you know, what do I do? This is my livelihood, as it happened for many, many people. And so, what did I do? After the panic, I prayed. And I opened my consciousness in gratitude, grateful that I had a tank full of gas I had just filled up. I had so many other things that I could be grateful for. And so, what happened to Jamaica and the world was the expansion in virtual communication, virtual engagement, every possible way. So virtual, and virtual group training and en engagement is what happened after that. I learned how to use Zoom, and that opened up a whole world of possibility. Now it's business as usual, because in that situation, I created my own duck soup. So we can't change what happens in the world, but we can change how we react to it. Yeah? We have to see the future and the road ahead as paved with endless possibilities. Think about how you're going to build on the foundation of the science of mind principles that you know. And think about also, what about the life lessons that, that you have learned over these past 20, 30, 40, however many years you have been on this planet? Because those lessons are powerful. Once we can extract from them the, the, the message that spirit um, uses those experiences to teach us. Uh, so here are some things that you can do. Well, first thing, to just find time during the day. Take a moment to just stop, be still, and just reflect on the presence and power of God within you. One, one beautiful way to do that is to put your hand on your heart. Do that for me now. Put your hand on your chest and see if you can feel your heart beating. That little gadget, um, gadget uh, organ, that's about the size of a fist. That is one of the most powerful parts of our being. If we don't have a heart, our heart working, you know, we're not on this plane anymore. So just become present to your heart beating and know that with every beat of your heart, there is uh, the life force of spirit is flowing through you. Second thing, make gratitude your everlasting mantra. Let it pour from your lips in every moment, in every circumstances, in every circumstance. It says, in all things give thanks, not for all things. So even when life is happening and you don't catch your duck, still give thanks. Become aware when you are blaming and complaining. Ouch. You know, this isn't working. Or why is she going on like that? Or, you know, I went to the temple and, I mean, and, and Janet didn't... Uh, 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 what are we complaining about? We need to redirect our awareness toward what is working and away from what isn't working. Because where we, whatever we focus on, that is what we're going to maintain. So we don't want to focus on the stuff that is not working. Four, face your challenges squarely and welcome the possibility that perfection and opportunity exist beyond the problems and the perceived condition. Five, release the past. You know, some wise person said yesterday ended last night. And release all those false ideas and beliefs that we have that support lack and limitation. Boy, I never have enough money. My clients are always late. It's me one. I can't manage by myself. You know, what is it that we are saying to ourselves? So we need to become present to those thoughts because those thoughts are grounded in the past and create a new future as we move forward because we are a lot greater than we think. Six, live and experience life from the inside out and stop being reactionary or reactive to what's happening from out there in. Allow spirit to guide you so we live from the inside out. And ensure that our thoughts and prayers are in absolute alignment with our highest good. Number seven, I think I say it every single time I, I speak here. Attend classes to widen our understanding and to deepen that understanding of science of mind. 
so as to expand beyond our personal, professional, and financial boundaries. Now, the thing is that we are moving into a, or, or we are fully embracing this virtual world, you know. So in a while, you know, it's, it's, a, it's still a, stop, a top secret, but if you promise not to tell anybody, I will tell you. We're going to be having a wonderful program, a prosperity development program coming up in September. It's a biggie. And we want every one of you and your friends and family and, as we would say here, your combo lot to attend. But don't tell anybody yet, you know, because it's still a secret. But you will, once it's time for it to be released, we will tell you officially. You get that? But shh. Classes, guys, that is what makes our roots grow. We come to church on a Sunday morning and we hear a wonderful message. If we don't have the, the, the foundation to support the message after church, the seeds might be like what, you know, falling on the stony soil or, you know, when somebody says, what kind of foolishness is that? Immediately the, the, the learning goes, so come to class. Number eight. If you are here in the sanctuary, I want you to allow yourself to just look around this, this physical property, the building, the garden, the space. And I want you to just take in its magnificence. This property is situated in one of the most prestigious sought after spaces in Kingston. You know, many people have come knocking on our doors and phone and ask, are you selling? Hello, please. Thank you, no. We are not selling anything. This is ours. This is our legacy. It belongs to all of us. Reverend Ann told me once that this property belongs to the members. We can't, we can't sell it and make a profit. And who, who, will, who, who, who will it belong to? It's ours. So we need to take care of it. It's a beautiful jewel. And we need to ensure that it is blessed with the tender, loving care that it, that it deserves. And the last thing, Chisel, Sunday, July 18th, into your diary and write it into your devices, enter it into your devices, and plan to come and be here to share in the presentation of the Temple's 2030 vision and strategy. And um, that, 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 that will be our extraordinary general meeting. So please make every effort to be here. And as you do, set your intention to explore how you can support the temple's transformation with your time, your talent, and your treasure. Friends, this life here and now is special. I invite you to embrace, to embody, and to express it with all your heart. What was the word that we used? What, that that um, Arthur Chang used to describe the life. Who remembers? Rapturously. Yes, we want to know that we can live it rapturously. Right? And we want to be able to live it rapturously and with all of the passion that we can muster. Say with me. My inner strength comes from the presence and power of spirit within me. Now that was a rehearsal. When I give you the next one, I'll make sure that I really, you know, hear it. I live my life rapturously and with passion. That sounds a little better. I trust who I am and who I am becoming. And the last one, I am a unique and precious expression of life. Turn to the person nearest to you and say, you are a unique and precious expression of life.
Mm -hmm. Wow, are we, we, I am the only one created like this. You are the, all right, say it. I am the only one created like this. Yes, and, and you are the only one created like, like, like you. There, there are no two of us, even if we are twins, our twin, our twin brother, our sister is different in some way. Okay? So we need to nurture ourselves as unique and precious, as a unique and precious expression of life. Nurture your inner world and let love be the driving force behind everything that you do. Within you is the wisdom of the Christ's presence that will drive your personal transformation. It can't help itself, it just must. With our prayers, we invite it. In prayer, it responds. In consciousness, we, pla we place our questions. In consciousness, our answers come. Thank you all for being a part of my own transformation. Namaste.